78 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Y'all smash the like button, hit the subscribe, turn on your notification bell so be notified when I drop a new video. And if you're digging the video, go ahead and share this joint. Man, oh man, oh man. Woo, ESPN first take was on fire this morning. Uh, shout out to Monica McNutt. Shout out to Molly. Shout out to Stephen A. and Shannon. What a wonderful segment they had on Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. Wow. Okay, first of all, uh, as you all know, uh, Caitlin Clark, rookie for the Indiana Fever um, in the WNBA. Um, it's been a much talk about her so-called haters and uh, how the WNBA players are jealous of her and hating on her because she's bringing so much attention to the league and she's changing the rules and she's the savior and the golden child and stuff like that and so they, they're saying the narrative from the media is that that many of these black WNBA players you know are, are jealous of Caitlin Clark because of the popularity she has and stuff like that and um, so many people are talking about how Caitlin Clark was fouled hard uh, by a player from uh, from the Chicago Sky, I believe, uh, Angel Reese's team. Uh, so she was fouled hard. And Shannon Sharp took the position that people aren't going to continue to watch uh, the WNBA in these record numbers right now if the WNBA doesn't do something and uh, stops uh, uh, letting players bully or hard foul Caitlin Clark. Monica McNutt and uh, Molly totally disagree with that. Uh, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon are pretty much on the same side here. And they're saying Stephen A. was taking the position that uh, these WNBA players should be grateful for Caitlin Clark because she's come in and uh, she's brought some attention to your league. And this is what you guys have been crying about. You guys want some attention. She's giving you attention. And, uh, yeah, it might not be fair, but, hey, uh, you know, uh, you know, may, yeah, maybe you are a better player than Caitlin Clark. But guess what? She's the golden child right now, and she's 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 making uh, noise around the media and bringing attention to your league. She's bringing up the ratings, and this is all going to equal more dollars for you later on. That's Stephen A. Smith and Shannon's uh, position on it. Monica McNutt uh, feels that uh, 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 Caitlin Clark, there's an attempted babying of Caitlin Clark here, and she's saying, listen. Caitlin Clark is a grown woman. She's a big girl. She can play ball. Let's stop trying to baby her. Let's stop acting like the whole league is against her. The whole league is not against her. Some girls might be jealous of her. Of course, that's just that comes with the territory. But to act like it's everybody and there's there's some league wide, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying Jordan rules against Caitlin Clark is ridiculous, right? So they went back and forth on this, and this was a really good segment, a uh, uh, really really good segment. Um, you know, that I watched them. I watched it on YouTube, the clip on YouTube. Um, and Monica McNutt let Stephen A. have it, you know what I'm saying? And she, she basically told him, like, you know, dude, you could have been doing this, you know, three years ago. You could have been talking about the WNBA three years ago. You you waited until this became a hot topic. And now, you know, Caitlin Clark is around. Now you want to talk about the WNBA, but you could have did this before. And that got under, underneath Stephen A. Smith's skin, uh, Stephen A's skin. You could tell he was offended by it, but it's the truth. It's the truth, bro. Like, at the end of the day, all you guys, and Shannon too, like all y'all falling into this Caitlin Clark hype, listen, yes, the girl can play. Ain't nobody blind. Like, everybody know Caitlin Clark can play. We also know that she's, she's the great hope. We also know that uh, it's not she didn't get here by herself. We know that it's not just Caitlin Clark that's up in the ratings for the WNBA and making the interest. It's the combination of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. But people keep leaving Angel Reese out of this equation because they don't want to give her any credit for anything. Um, Angel Reese, uh, uh, that championship LSU game uh, uh, was like huge numbers. Like, like I never seen, like I never seen people. Uh, a bunch of men calling me up on the phone and sending me links and videos and stuff. People were so interested in Angel Reese when LSU won uh, uh, that title. And then last year when Kayla Clark won, it was the same thing. So many people, so many men were interested in uh, um, the female basketball. And we couldn't wait for the W. We said, man, we're going to start watching WBA now. It, 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 finally, they got a good storyline. It's going to be like Magic and Bird, you know what I'm saying? If the WNBA plays this right, 
then, then the magic and bird effect to be in, in place for Angel Reese and for uh, 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 Caitlin Clark. You know, you know, and Magic and Bird saved the NBA, and this could save the WNBA if the media plays it right. But instead of the media playing the rivalry, the media keeps hyping up Caitlin Clark with, and trying to leave, cut Angel Reese out of the equation, and it's not going to work that way, bro. So is there resentment for, for Caitlin Clark? As a rookie coming in, getting all this attention, of course there is. Uh, um, you know, and, and I watched the foul that everybody was talking about. Uh, the, the old girl who fouled her, bro, this is a hip check. All she did was bump her and knocked her down. Like, we see worse stuff than this in the, in, 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 um, in the, in, in the NBA all the time. Like the, like, the way people were talking about it before I actually saw it, I'm thinking it was like some hard slap across the face or some, you know, you know, some obvious flagrant or something like this. This is ridiculous. Now they want, listen, you can't, don't tell me how good Caitlin Clark is. And then at the same time, you telling me she needs to be baby and treated like, like, come on fam. I saw Michael Jordan go up to the basket and get put on his backside every time he even attempted to go uh, 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 towards the rim against the Knicks or the, or, the, uh, or the Pacers. Excuse me, the Knicks and the Pistons and the Pacers. I mean, they, they had the Jordan rules. They, they just put them down. I seen Lonzo Ball come into the league with all the hype. And I seen every point guard uh, 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 get up in his, his business. You know what I'm saying? Every point guard took it personal, want the dog and want to drag him. But, but no, it was no nationwide conversations about resentment and jealousy. Wait till, wait till Bronny James. Wait till Bronny James get in the league next year. You want to talk about jealousy, resentment. When Bronny James leapfrogs all of these players that are 10 times better than him, and he gets drafted above them, you're gonna see some resentment. You're gonna see some uh, uh, some anger, some jealousy. You're gonna see all of that in the league. But why Caitlin Clark is getting all this, this, this crybaby attention is, I mean, I know some of it is all a part of the game. It's all part of, you know, the, you know, the inevitable but the media guy finds stuff to talk about. But at the same time, man, this is getting ridiculous, man. Caitlin Clark is a good player. She's going to be even better. She's going to develop into a great player and stuff like that. But this crybaby stuff, man, cut it out, man. Just just cut it out, man. Now, now you can't even touch the girl. Now y'all trying to make her a victim. Oh, and, and Shannon Sharp, oh, you think people going to keep watching this? Man, them people ain't going to keep watching this if they keep letting her get fouled, hard fouled like that. Well, then they not, they not real sports fans. They're not sports fans then. If they're not going to watch it because Caitlin Clark gets fouled hard. She got bumped. Oh, I'm, I'm turning this off. She got bumped. This is this is not fair. It's ridiculous. And I, and I resent the fact that Stephen A. Smith would even suggest that these black players should somehow be grateful for Caitlin Clark coming in. Even though it, 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 they've done more than her, even though that they might be better than her, they need to be grateful that she's there to up the stock. And then they tried, they even tried to like, uh, they even tried to finesse us with this whole, Shannon Sharp knew what he was doing when he brought this up too. Uh, he was like, oh, uh, uh, in the media space, you know, uh, in the media space, uh, Pat McAfee, when he came in, he got that big deal from ESPN. I wasn't jealous. I just said, hey, I need to start doing like this. I need to do that. And then Stephen A. Smith was like, yeah, yeah, me too. Me. Shut up, bro. You know you were jealous. You were jealous of that dude. You still jealous to this day. Stephen A. Smith still jealous. Stephen A. Smith, jealous of YouTubers, man. As soon as a YouTuber uh, 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 do something good or something like that, here, here they come hating, stealing your ideas, and of course they got a bigger platform than you. So that's what happens. See, this is what happens um, for y'all who don't know. YouTubers, many YouTubers, and I'm not going to say no names or whatever, but many of them have for years uh, uh, have, have said certain stuff, and uh, uh, m big media outlets have uh, taken those ideas and put them on there. So if a YouTuber got 100,000 subs and 14,000 people seen his video where he, he might have made a statement, uh, had, a, had a good talking point or something about, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know, uh, Caitlin Clark, for instance. 14,000 people seen the video in 24 hours. Stephen A. Smith and uh, ESPN and their research teams and stuff like that for these morning shows, they might, they, they watching this guy's show and then they steal his talking points and put him on their morning show in the morning and now half a million people to a million people in 24 hours have seen that person. So now who do you think are they gonna, gonna get credit for those ideas? The bigger network is gonna get credit for those ideas and that's how it works. 
they've been stealing from YouTubers this entire time. But anyway, I don't want to turn this video into nothing else. I'm just saying, like, but, you know, look, man, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark is the story for the WNBA. If the WNBA is smart, they will play into that, and they will rival those two, Magic and Bird style, uh, uh, let their fan bases go at each other. That's just what you do in a healthy, tasteful way as possible. You know, it's going to be some, it's going to get out of hand at some point. There's going to be a little racial stuff there. But so what? You you, you got to play that just like they did with Magic and Bird. You can't just make this about Caitlin Clark because without a dance partner, if you don't, if you try to do it without Angel Reese, it's not going to work. I'm telling you, it's just not going to work. But y'all let me know what y'all think, man. 78 Sports TV, salute to the mighty LDBC. Share this video and my father here, though, deuces.